This is a poem about, I write a lot about the Philippines. I'm Filipino American. I'm born and raised here, but also lived a little bit in a year in San Francisco, California. And I uh, also lived a little while as a child in the Philippines. And anyway, um, you might have seen, um, what is the name of that show where they have uh, uh, monsters every grin, grin. Mm -hmm. but, uh, a couple of months ago there was a, a monster called a swan on, on grin. Did anyone see that in that episode? Okay. Um, well, this particular uh, swan is kind of an all-purpose monster in the Philippines, but um, this particular one that I'm going to uh, read a poem about is the Mananangal. And this is a woman that can, at night, she can separate the top half of her body from the bottom half. And she leaves the bottom half. You know, it's not fair for, you know, monsters have all these powers, right? And so we have to have some way to, to get rid of them. And so her, her weakness is that she has to leave her bottom half somewhere, you know, protected by somebody or something like that. And they go off and do things like eat babies. Seriously, eat babies. <laughs> um, all right. So this is, what's that? <laughs> you must have seen this episode. Anybody here watch it? Um, this, this is one who was, was like using her tongue, which is like a straw, like a long straw, and sucking the fetus out of this woman's pregnant. Uh, right. <laughs> That's so right. That's a nice image. All right, so a swan. Shooting marbles, Cardin from across the street and I knelt on gritty concrete in front of his house. His mother and a couple of friends sat on the steps laughing and gossiping about the swan, those routine sculptors of the Philippine night. Cardin's mother had a pretty cousin who could pierce your jugular with her hollow tongue like sharpened bamboo and delicately sip your blood. Her eyes darted crimson. One of the friends had an uncle with fingernails hard as stone, his breath reeking of damp earth, of human flesh three days dead. They said Mangantan who sells baskets at market, changes into cat, dog, or boar at full moon and prowls green dark roads. That night I was strolling by Cardin's house and I saw his mother, a pretty mestiza widow, her face hidden by hair hanging down as she bent far forward from the waist. A mananangal, the worst kind of a swan, women who can detach themselves at the hips, shucking their legs at night like a wrinkled slip. They fly just face and breasts to prey on infants. For a moment a shadow like a giant bat darkened the moon, then I ran to my friend's room. He cried as we sneaked into his mother's bedroom and sprinkled crushed garlic and holy water on the legs propped up in the southeast corner. She'll be free, he told his trembling shoulders. She'll finally be free. The next day, friends and neighbors gathered at their house. The priest wouldn't let anyone in the bedroom, they said. Then six men carried a pine box into the light. I couldn't forget how his mother flew in the window at dawn. Her face was white, her lips full and red. She screamed when she couldn't touch her legs. He reached, he rushed in, began to brush away the garlic, his mother like a trapped moth fluttering against the wall. I leaped and wrapped my arms around Cardin. She swooped, we struggled until the first sunbeam touched her. My friend sobbed as I wiped blood from a cut on my arm. The funeral was a week ago, and all I have dreamed the last six nights his neighbors standing in a line. I'm running. They whisper, Aswa, Aswa.